summer series, A String of Pearls, Dutch Buzz contributors speak to people who have made an exceptional contribution to our local community. People whose passion for what they do have had an added value for the city of The Hague. One of The Hague's historic monuments, Villa Ockenburg in the suburb of Bloosdowne, has been beautifully restored as a community project. It's taken eight years of intense planning and execution by a mix of local volunteers led by experts to restore the gardens, greenhouse and stately home back to its former glory. Sadly, the villa has been temporarily closed due to the corona measures, but the greenhouse does a roaring trade in takeaways in these Ockenburg woods. I spoke to the founder of the Villa Ockenburg Foundation, Petra Brekelmans, about her initiative to restore the villa and the grounds, and about her involvement with setting up the Hungry Mind Clubhouse for the international community some years back. How did you get involved with the now beautifully restored Villa Ockenburg? When I was a little girl, I played here. You know, I, I was on an adventure in these woods and it was a happy place for us to play in. And then, uh, you know, when I had children, these woods had turned into not so positive woods. You know, I wouldn't allow my kids to cycle through the woods or play here on their own or with their friends. And I thought in 2012, maybe with the community we can save this. And that's the start of it, 2012. Goodness, and it's taken all of eight years, Petra. Um, you've worked along with how many volunteers? Because it's a true community project, hasn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, there's 150 volunteers uh, connected basically to this uh, uh, project and uh, 70,000 uh, voluntary hours uh, we spent here. We started counting in 2015 because I started with four other girls women. Uh, in 2012 we wrote the plan how to save this place um, if we worked together with people who have time, voluntary time, money, materials, talents, all kinds of things. And we basically put all the bricks together to build this castle back to how it should be. Yeah. Take us back to, is it 1650? How far back do we go? 1654 this uh, uh, house was built by um, uh, Jacob Westerbaum and you know in those days uh, the aristocracy had their uh, sort of summer houses outside of outside of town and he built his here in the dunes at Kijkduin eh? there was no Kijkduin yet but uh, and but he basically he wasn't like everybody else uh, you know, he wasn't like, stay away from my more expensive land. No, he invited the people in the community to come uh, to the free theater. He invited people to come and enjoy his um, gardens, pick flowers and fruits and enjoy it because uh, his palace was big enough for his family and his friends. So very different, very <laughs> a unique person, I think. Why was it allowed to become so derelict? What happened? Well, you know, we talked three... 350 plus years ago, eh? so over the, the centuries, this uh, was a house for people to live in and mainly, um, well, the happy few, uh, until the Second World War. Around that time, uh, you know, Jewish kids were housed here that came from Germany and Austria as a sort of temporary shelter. Then um, the Germans the occupied the Netherlands and they had their base here, right, right at the coast, where they could see the, um, uh, the British troops come fly across. And this was a, yeah, all the bunkers are here in the dunes, so this was a perfect place for them to, to be. And after the Second World War, this house was quite badly damaged, so they restored it and turned it into the biggest youth hostel in Europe. So 400. Uh, bunk beds basically. So it might be quite well known abroad. I think so, yes, definitely. I think in Germany a lot of German youngsters used to come and to the youth hostel here at Ockenburg. Yeah, what an amazing, amazing history. Um, how did you get 150 people, uh, locals in this case, enthusiastic about your project? How did you get them on board? Well, you know, if you have a dream you have to have um, certain ingredients to make the dream reality. And, you know, we with the five friends, we wrote a plan and we said, we need people who can garden, who can tidy up this tsunami of mess around this beautiful house that nobody recognizes anymore. And we need money. 
But the municipality of The Hague, who owned this this terrain with the uh, listed building on it, um, they wanted um, an entrepreneur to develop this place into a big hotel. And they, need, they said, we need one strong, financially strong party to save this. And I, But it had been for sale for 20 years mm. almost when I started looking at it. And I said, well, there is no commercial party available. because You can wait for another 20 years, but maybe the money should come from somewhere else. So we started, so I said, I'll take care of the money. I'll start looking into the, um, you know, the, um, the, the donation funds, you know. And um, so I knew there was money, let's say, give money or charity money available for this project to save our cultural heritage. And others started doing the gardens because they were totally neglected. Others said, um, let us start uh, on the interior. Uh, others said, oh, we, we were given a greenhouse. I can build a greenhouse with my friends. Others said, I know there are um, tiles available. Uh, I will pick them up with my truck and I'll bring them to... The so everybody did what they, they could. And 150 people come from the wide community. So from Westland, from the international community as well. Eh? We have people who work their whole life at uh, uh, EPO and they retired. And they think, right, so there's a German guy and an Iranian guy. And they are in the mix with people from Westland, from The Hague. Well, The Hague is very segregated, eh? so divided in many little pieces. And people work together here. So we built our own community of around 150 volunteers. And everybody works with their own talents and time. Is there still much to be done? Or are you saying, now this is it? You know this house you can't just do it up and then think okay well we hope for the best there's a business plan behind this so the business plan of all the developers was we need to make money on this our plan was we need to find non-commercial money um, and then we need to be able to maintain the listed building and maintaining a listed building is the culprit here so it's, it costs a lot of money to maintain this I house. I believe you. <laughs> but that is our only worry. Yeah. So we made a business plan based on develop, yeah, maintaining this old house and the gardens. So we now have found um, uh, an entrepreneur for the, for the restaurant and he's going to make an educational restaurant out of this. So we basically activated people from the community. You know, come away from your homes, come away from being lonely. Be part of this new family and let's do something special. And it basically created a big bond between our employees. But employees, you know, we are all together in this. So we stakeholders. Stakeholders, basically. In a way, yeah. yeah. Super. And so the, the Horeca basically pays us a, um, a part of their turnover. So we can pay most of the maintenance of the house. But we will have to uh, keep uh, raising funds. Uh, you know, we will always do fundraisers here. We've always done and we will always do that. Yes. You'd hardly opened. And I think you'd already won one or two prizes. Yes, that's also, you know, you think uh, our municipality of The Hague basically decides what, how our, the structure in our city is organized, where we have our community centers, where uh, people gather. They plan it. It's the, the division of planning of our city. And of course, this is an example of, you know, from Kijkduin eh, at the beach all the way into Westland, 25,000 houses are being built. And it's not that they came up with this idea two years ago. This plan was developed maybe 20 years ago. And in that development, no cup of coffee, community center or anything was planned. And I think, but why would people live in a community where, where you can't, um, you know, go, go on adventure or, you know, go to a, uh, enjoy a cultural program or... Yeah? There was definitely a vacuum there. I've missed it for the last 25 years that I've been living here and at last. <laughs> exactly. At last. So this is, uh, yeah. you know, it's back alive. Lots to to do. There's 50 events a year here. Our volunteers organize a podium with all kinds of talents on it. Um, so you know, 
if you then think, okay, we also create a garden, that was the first That's idea. The mm -hmm. Yeah. So the garden here, that was the building ground the municipality of The Hague had in mind. So that was the value here. The value building ground is worth a lot more yeah. than woodland. Yeah. And we said, municipality of The Hague, you can't build a flat block in the woods. You know, we need to... Um, create space for people to enjoy. So we went back to Jacob Westerbaan's age, uh, where this was uh, a garden where everybody enjoyed picking flowers, you know, maintaining and enjoying. And we said we are going to make this a community garden. And then with that, we of course um, made a big impact on the, um, um, the, the community involvement. What do you do with public space in the city? Do you build a flat block or do you create a garden where people work together and enjoy together? And so we um, won the, uh, the the Hague Public Space Prize, the Haagse Openbare Ruimte Prijs. And uh, so this proves that a community project can also be involved in what we do with the city. And it's really appreciated because otherwise we wouldn't have won this prize. Well, we're sitting here um, and you can hear in the background there's somebody digging. Uh, everybody's involved, everybody's busy. There's like a, a bunch of bees in the garden here this morning. Yeah. Super, super to see and to witness. Now I'm going to move back 10 years to another community project initiated again by you, The Hungry Mind, which was a, a very welcoming, warm hub for the international community uh, set up 10 years ago. Take us back, Petra. Well, you know, we moved back after having lived abroad for 17 years. We moved back to The Hague and our children went to the International School of The Hague. And we cycled through these woods, Ockenburg Woods, to school. And I always said to my children, don't cycle through the woods on your own. It's dangerous. Not like uh, my childhood, but now it was totally different. And I also found that in Loosduinen, they were not used to an international school with newcomers or foreigners or you know I told I told you about the segregation in The Hague there's um, people point at each other where are you from you're not from my community and I believe in one big table in the community and there wasn't a big table for newcomers and old people old Los Diners or traditional Los Diners to meet and I thought before I find myself a job I need to create peace in this Los Diner area <laughs> I don't know if that was the right choice, but I enjoyed it. But, you know, 10 years of my life, I think I'm now going to find myself a job. But <laughs> The Hungry Mind started because I wanted one big table where people could meet each other. And there were five empty clubhouses, uh, sports, canteens on Sport Park Ockenburg, right behind the international school. And they were all empty in the daytime. And I thought, okay, one of the five, when are we going to start? Well, of course, that was impossible because the municipality of The Hague decides where our community centers have to be. And I think the community should speak up and say, hey, we, there's something new in our community, we need a new place to meet. So I basically initiated a new um, community center. We didn't need any subsidies. The, the local community and the international community started running this clubhouse with activities in the daytime for grown-ups and after school for children. Yeah, I was a volunteer there and you could hear every language under the sun while you were having a cup of coffee there and, and chatting to fellow internationals. I think it played a big role um, in the international community here in The Hague. You know, I think it's really important that when you uh, travel around the world that you feel at home somewhere and uh, I think the hungry mind, yeah, it's just a little dot, you know, it helps I think for a lot of people to feel at home. And it's just celebrated its 10th anniversary. Congratulations, Peter. How was it celebrated? Well, of course, the Hungry Mind and also Ockenburg suffered from Corona. You know, we all have to do uh, distance and, you know, we have to really strictly respect each other and keep a distance. I think that's what it's all about. It's everybody's individual responsibility to care for somebody else and keep a distance. Um, so that was all set up properly and they, uh, you know, there was coffee and cake for everyone and, uh, you know, the people, you know, I was only involved at The Hungry Mind for um, four years mm -hmm. and then I moved on and the people who, you know, took over or, or 
continued because nobody takes over from anybody. We, this is a community project. We run it together and then new people come and go and they step in each other's footsteps. And, uh, uh, well, Tricia Kromberg, she basically took on the, the responsibility and with her team, they're still there. I think Tricia, Tricia's been a volunteer for nine years, I think, at the Hungry Minds. It's amazing. With uh, Monique Steen, Stolwijk, yeah, amazing. And all these activities are still going on. It's a lively hub. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do I. Now, Petra, we come to... Um, Getting to know you a little better, I asked you to bring along a treasured photograph, something of your uh, bedside table and something of your desk. What did you bring? Um, I brought uh, a photo of my dad because he passed away when I lived in Egypt, uh, just all of a sudden, far too young. And, you know, I was never able to say goodbye to him. And when, wherever I lived, I always talked to my dad, just my own imagination, obviously. But I always feel... Uh, supported by my dad you know he uh, for instance we had the opening on the on the 12th of September and um, uh, at a certain point uh, rain it started raining and I was like dad please no please and it started uh, the wind picked up and we had maybe like two minutes of rain and then and I think it's my dad I'm not religious yeah. huh? I was there I experienced it I was I there know. and I like so these were yeah. So I always feel supported, whether I was in a sort of difficult country. Uh, you know, I have mm. not, not been able to say goodbye to my dad, but I always feel he's there. So this is his photograph. Yeah. He's my, my example. He was such a, he had such a vision, this man. Unbelievable. But I won't tell you about it now, but I'm so proud of my dad. And I just, you know, step in his footsteps, mm. I think. <laughs> I think that's a, a very comforting um, uh, story to hear from you, Petra, because so many of us are, especially in the international community, are very far from their loved ones and uh, anxious about them, worried about them. We can't actually go and visit them until this is over. Yeah, but yeah, thank so you for that. Yeah. yeah, it's important that you believe and that you feel strong. You know, but yeah, I feel supported by my mm. by my dad wherever. I always say, whether nice weather, my dad is up there. He will arrange it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it worked. And now, what did you bring off your bedside table? Well, I always ah. I always have a book beside my uh, bedside table, but of course, um, you know, uh, Ockenburg is also um, a, um, a group of volunteers who wrote a book about this special place, and it's called Een Klein Paleis, and it's full of pictures of you know uh, Ockenburg in 1650 until now, and all the stories and photos of whatever happened here, and. I love the book. Yeah, I bought a copy for myself at the opening and I'm halfway through it now. It's it's a lovely read, even if you um, don't know this area very well. So it's a, a sort of forgotten piece of the Hague, this Loos Duin and the dunes here. I mean, in the Roman times, there were they found Roman um, uh, horse graves, for instance. I mean, I won't tell it all. People should buy it. It's a uh, klein paleis, eh? just at bol.com or at the Paagman, the local uh, bookshop, please support local, uh, shop local. Um, but so that is something that um, is beside my bed. Um, and I'm really proud of that's also part of this community initiative. Yeah. And what did you bring off your desk? Something business-like? Well, you know. Where would we be without our telephone? And I hate it sometimes. And it just went off. You had to move your bag quickly. But that's it. Eh? Where would, how would I be able to do this project without my mobile phone? Not at all. Your best friend or your worst enemy? Well, both. Yeah. It's, but it's this whole project. It's far too difficult to do as a community project, but also we all love it at the same time. So it's the same with my phone. You can't do without, but sometimes you think... Can you just move away from me? <laughs> I couldn't have done it without my phone. Yeah. Um, you actually uh, a repat, so you you can really, really put yourself in, in in the shoes of our international community in the Hague in more ways than than one. Um, what would you advise people during this 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 really anxious, uh, difficult time? Uh, how can they best face their their issue. You know, I think, you know, I, I see a lot of people going in hibernation, sort of withdrawing from the community, and we all, people need people. Call each other. 
you know, go to the woods, sit on a bench, there's a meter and a half, sit outside and enjoy, keep connected in whatever way you can think of. But The Hague has so many woods, Ockenburg is one, but there is, uh, you know, it's Bos, there's Klingendal. Go outside, look at each other, you know, talk about your worries and, and you know, don't forget about each other. It's easy behind your screen to think, oh, we're working constantly behind this screen. I need people around me. And I, I felt it in Egypt where we lived, in Russia where we lived, in Aberdeen where we lived. People around you will make you feel at home. And I think that gives us strength in life. Yeah. It's a wisdom from uh, Peter Brekelmans, the founder of the, and this is quite a mouthful, Peter, the Stichting tot behoud van, he, van de historische buitenplaats Ockenburg. Thank you for joining us on Dutch Buzz as this week's The Hague Pearl. It was a pleasure speaking to you at the beautifully restored Villa Ockenburg. And if anybody listening to this, visit Villa Ockenburg. It is an experience. Beautifully done. Thank you, Peter. Meet the international community in The Hague. Den Haag.